Hello, welcome back to Asian Cinema Season 2, and in this video we're going to be talking about, we're going to be talking about a film from Hirokazu Kodai Eda, uh, who is a filmmaker that you have seen, Pretty a, good. <laughs> you have seen a film from, uh, Like Father, Like Son. Uh, I don't think you join me for the review on that one, but you will be for this one, which is his 1998 film, Afterlife. Interestingly enough, we just watched a Ricky Gervais Netflix show called Afterlife. I think I know which is the superior of the two. So this is very a, different. Very different, yeah. It's hard to compare. But anyway, so this is a film I'd heard about a couple of years ago, actually, and the concept always intrigued me. I guess I was just waiting for a good Blu-ray release of it. It just came out in the UK on the BFI, so I thought it'd be a perfect opportunity to watch it in high definition, you know, for the first time. And the concept is the film is set in not heaven, but like a limbo area i would guess like it, it it's not i don't know if you'd call it heaven it's an afterlife it's it's not what you would imagine heaven to be but it's set in this kind of in between space if you will a where bus stop in a way not bus stop but uh, yeah just a stop on the way yeah it's it's limbo basically it's that kind of idea where the people who have died and it's passed not very on nice there <laughs> the, the people who have passed on uh, they enter this building and inside this building are people who work there who are going to help these recently deceased people to select one memory from their lives that they want to hold on to forever. Like you have to pick one memory, like the, the most fun you've ever had or a particularly meaningful memory to you. You get to take one with you to the next plane of existence and you will essentially live that memory over and over again uh, forever. And the concept is they have a few days, they have a week in which to do this, but you don't get to kind of live inside your own memory. They recreate the memory and make a film of it. And then you watch the film and then you pass on. So that's the concept. Um, what do you think of the film? Uh, it was it, a little bit of everything, I would say, because there were some of the actors that were older people. Yeah. And I was just sat there thinking, they're, it's, they're too good. Because it looks like, I mean, I, I know that they knew that they were in a movie, but especially this one lady and this one the red older dress. man. Uh, the red dress lady who used to dance when she was a girl. Yes, because when she was trying to recall her memory, memory it was too real, you know? It, it's The way she was fumbling with her words, it was like she was saying it for the first time. So I think that when they sat her down, they said, all right, so we're not going to give you a script but we want you to uh, remember something and then tell us about that memory. And that's the way it kind of turned out and the way it was cut as well. It was like they, if she fumbled too much, they cut that out and then they, because you could see that they'd shifted and so on and the way some of the scenes were cut. So it just seemed like some random interviews where some of the younger ones, they seemed like they were acting. And then uh, the main old guy, in the beginning I was thinking, ah, uh, oh, this, this one is like unplanned as well but then as the more we saw of him i understood he was acting but he was just really good yeah it was good i mean the acting was good it wasn't like it felt natural to me in a in a uh, unnatural environment i liked the idea it was original uh in its own way at least from the 90s mm -hmm. i think it was good it wasn't amazing but it was pretty good I thought it was. I loved it. I thought it was incredible. Like, I loved everything about it, pretty much. There's one sequence where one of the women who works at the afterlife station, we'll call it, um, she's, she's going to a location scout, like, to find inspiration for the scenes that they're going to film for these people. And she goes out to, like, the city and stuff. And that's the only scene where I thought it wasn't quite as... Uh, intriguing as the rest of the film. Well, it's because, because I was thinking, how is she there? Yeah, is she that, a ghost? It, it made me wonder, is, is she crossing over into the real world and no one can see her and she's getting inspiration? Or does this station exist in the real world but they can't see it? I don't know. And that was one thing I really liked about the film was that as the film went on, I became more interested in the people who worked there than the people who were, who were, who were dead. Like It was like, this is the amount of people we have this week to make a memory for. And I did find those people interesting and their, every, all the, the things they were recalling from their lives were interesting, but I became more intrigued and like, why are these people there? 
Are they dead? It's because you started learning why they were. And... No, it wasn't. Even at the beginning, I was I was like, I, I hope we find out more about the people who work there. And we do. And I love that. I as was the more film... interested in the older older people. As the film progressed, you, you very slowly and naturally discover more about the people who work there, which I loved, which has made it a fuller film for me. And I can confirm, I did look up just about five minutes ago, that there was a... A mixture of actors and non-actors as far as the interviews were concerned. There we go. So the first half of the film, a lot of it is just the camera at these dead people talking about their memories and stuff. And it's funny because as that woman was talking about when she was a girl and she had a red dress and she was dancing, I was thinking this is so realistic. I wonder if this is like a kind of non-actor thing. And then you, and then I paused, and you it, paused it and, and it was you like... you knew I was going to comment on it. That's another thing I loved about the film was kind of the experience watching it. Because we, we just kept pausing it and just chatting about stuff like memories and well, yeah, what memory you, would you once, pick. For and... once, you hadn't seen it before. You know, most of the Japanese movies or Asian movies we've seen recently, you've already seen it once before. Yeah, I suppose. Um, I agree about the uh, the city scene, because how could she be in such a realistic environment, but they still had a fake moon? Yeah, you get this. Yeah, they have a fake moon in, that in the building. That didn't make sense to me. Well, why it, it, would it, they have that? And they still had snow. So why were they making up that fake moon? But that's... In the building, but they could go to a real city. Yeah, it, it's strange. I'm not entirely sure. And that just this... being in that worn out building too, it's really like ugly and worn down and I like, I, dirty. And... I don't know. I, I liked it though. For some reason, there was something about it that I just... I don't know. I get what you mean though. It, it, the, the main location is a little bit grimy and worn down and stuff. I feel like they were being punished for working there. In a sense, and we do ultimately we do ultimately find out why they're there. We won't go into that in the video, but yeah. I, I like that that's revealed and, and that the ambiguity wasn't placed on those characters because, like I said, you spend a lot of time with the people who are just trying to help the other people as well, so it kind of it makes it more rounder. The, the only other thing I think would have, for me, capped it off was if we got to see the movies at the end of all the memories that they made. We get to see them setting it up in like a production studio and everything yeah. and, and like putting it together, the making of, trying to get certain elements of it right and things and replicating and recreating elements of these memories. But we never get to see the final. We see everyone sitting down in the cinema, the lights go down and the thing begins to play and then we cut away. So it's obviously a very intentional choice of you don't get to see this, this is their personal thing. And so I understand that, but I would have enjoyed seeing it just because we've invested like an hour and a half, two hours in these characters and some of their memories. The, the one that we got to see though, I'm glad that we didn't get to see the others because I didn't know what was going to happen once they saw it. But once we did get to see what happens when someone yeah, saw that, it, that, that, made sense. that made it like, oh. And, and, it, and that was very powerful. To yeah, me. It, it's, that's, a very, that's, a very, that's, that's a very good point. It does make the I th yeah. that moment more powerful. So I do agree with that. Yeah. Uh, we have to have a spoiler section in the end, I think. Or okay, we're we can do have that. To discuss we can do a, we can do a we can do a spoiler section yeah. in the end for sure. Uh, one thing I, I really liked about the film was that I was so invested in it. I was so enjoying everything about it. There's about three points in this film where I think it could have ended. Like, okay, that's the last shot and we're done. Yeah. And then it continued and I was like, oh, yeah, I was really like... Same. I was just like, I'm glad that there's more of this. And then when it did end, I thought, great, that's like... It didn't outstay its welcome and I was I just really glad. I actually don't remember which one of them it ended with right now. <laughs> and we just finished watching it like 15 minutes ago. No, no, no. Now I remember. Yeah, anyway, okay, yeah, I remember, yeah. yeah. But uh, I mean, I just, I love the acting and the, the concept of it and... <sighs> different people like how they would view their life at the end and looking back on memories and you know i want to see another movie with that old man the, the watanabe the main the like, main old man yeah, yeah I, I liked him that the his acting was spot on i think yeah the, the interesting thing with his character was that he didn't know what to pick and he'd lived a very ordinary unremarkable life and he just didn't know what to pick and so they made a phone call and brought in tapes 71 tapes one from each year of his life and so he sits there kind of hmm just kind of reliving his entire life through like fly on the wall video footage yeah. one of which to me seemed like a very overt reference and homage to um ozu in terms of the framing from the kind of uh seated level there's this mm -hmm. one scene but um yeah i like that i like that concept of sitting down just watching your life like okay <laughs> he can't figure it out for himself mm -hmm. we'll just give him 
you know, whatever we can. The, the part that happened after that, I, I thought was absolutely brilliant as well. It had its moments where I was thinking, wow, well done. Like, the reveal of certain things and so on was really good to me. Yeah. And I feel like in some parts, it was showing just enough. But there was one scene uh, where I was thinking, okay, I'm, I'm done with that one now. I f- feel like they dragged it out way too far. What was it? The snow scene. The snow scene? Uh, with a girl. No, I, I, no that's... I was done probably about 25 seconds before they ended it, and those 25 seconds were No, I loved that. I loved that scene. It was like the way the camera was following her very roughly. You could tell that conveyed. it hadn't done the scene before. It was improvised. The snow had been untouched as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it was a so, rawness to it, which, which to me kind of captured yeah, what she was, it was feeling kind of like in that the moment. Eating scene for me in the end because no, it was just dragged out. No, I didn't it's feel way, it. way more dynamic than the pie scene in a ghost story. And you know the characters who are working at this station, I'll just call it that. You know they're very uh, reserved, and they're meant to be that way because they're kind of impartial. You know, okay, just tell us about your life, and we'll try to do that the best that we can. They don't show too too many emotions because obviously they're trying to stick to their job. So that scene with her is showing kind of her venting a little bit, and I I, lo- I love the way that the camera is kind of you know sliding yeah, around as she was doing good. it. So I, I really like, actually love that moment. It was good the first fifteen or twenty seconds. <laughs> I would say this welcome for you. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. That's fair. I liked the idea of it. I liked how you could see the snow was untouched. I like what feeling you got out of it, but then it was just like, okay, I got it. Hmm. Okay, I got it. And then I felt from her in the end that she felt forced to keep going, whereas realistically she would have slumped down in the end or or stopped somehow. But I feel like I feel like the director probably stood there and was like, go, 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 keep going, keep going, like keep rolling. I, f- I had that feeling the last 25 seconds, which is where it ended for me because I, I think something changed in her after that. Hmm. It got repetitive, exactly what she was doing. It felt forced. It's interesting that because you seem to, a lot with, with films that you watch, you seem to be almost looking or you, or you seem more receptive to characters or actors in a movie being aware that they're in it. Like, you, you just seem to, to latch onto things. That's where because like... uh, when I watch a movie, I put myself in their shoes. Okay. And when I was in her shoes at that moment, yeah. after she swept off, off the edge and stuff like that and fell to the ground, that's when it should have ended. But she got up and she did the whole thing again. Exactly the same thing. Picked up, threw one, threw two, kicked, kicked, swept off no, again. No, it wasn't the same. And then kicked it. She was kicking more violently the second time around and she fell over because she was so kind of haphazard. So there was a difference <sighs> to the second go around. It, um, mm. <laughs> no, it's, it's fine. The difference for me was that she felt, oh, i got to do it one more time. That, that's what I felt. I felt like if I was her, that would have been it. And then next scene, or at least like zoom in on her face and her just, but they'll, she had it out now. There'll be they'll, they'll, there'll be moments where you're watching a film and you're like, oh, I feel like the, the, the actor's aware of the camera or something. So yes. like you, you really get like yes. into like those little kind of the minute and minutiae of things. But yeah. anyway, so moving swiftly past the, the snow scene. Trying to think if there's anything else to I mean, I loved it. I really did love it. And I love the concept of them making a movie of it. And that speaks just to kind of how memories aren't really <laughs> exactly as they were. I like, felt such disappointment for the <laughs> dead people. Like the guy with the planes. Like, yeah, the, the wings are the most important thing. Let's just take the wings off and place them higher. I'm just like, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's a sense that they And the that clouds were like cotton balls. And I'm like, I would not be happy with this. But he's Japanese. He's going to be too polite. Oh, it's just like I'm up in the clouds. No, oh, no. it's not, man. <laughs> so to me, that was like, oh man, I was when he was c- explaining it to to the people. I was seeing the, the yeah, clouds yeah, 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 and the yeah. colors mm. and everything, and I, I I I felt it. And then when they were recreating it, I was just like, oh, it's wow. not your mother's meatballs. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, but I, I like that because it speaks to like it would be all too easy if it's like, okay, I want to have this memory of when I was a kid. Okay. You know, you can now live in that literal memory, but they have the challenge to try and, you know, remake it in a way. And it's never going to be quite the same. And that speaks to memories where our memories aren't going to be the same as what was actually there. It's what, as the years pass, we remember certain details and we almost make up little parts as well. But they have the memories on VHS tapes. 
You could just show that. I don't know, because those VHS tapes, they obviously it's like a fantastical element where they somehow just kind of have, you know, plucked from thin air these things where cameras were never there. But it's like kind of fly on the wall, static camera, just looking and showing you the the moments of it, whereas the actual films they make are seemingly a little bit more cinematic, I suppose. They build sets and things like that. And I see what you mean. But I felt more when I saw the VHS tapes. Sure, yeah. Well, that, that, that's another thing, because that, that's like that's the actual memory. And then here's... The, cause specifically, there's a, a park bench scene yeah. or memory that we see from you know an actual literal perspective on the videotape and then the staged version that they remake and, and do inside the afterlife station. So you get to see kind of both things. I liked the little scenes we saw of him watching his life and kind of commenting on himself as he was watching. You know, like when uh, he has his first kind of date with his future oh, wife. Oh, yeah, I love his comments. And like, like, you know, she's like... Oh, you idiot. Yeah, you idiot. You know? <laughs> <laughs> like, what, do you have any hobbies? Movies. You yeah. idiot. <laughs> And I loved all the little bits where, like, the workers were, like, discussing the people at night and going, oh, this guy, like, another one of these, you know, oh, this guy, I have trouble with this one. You know, that kind of stuff. And they're going through, like, the, it's so ordinary to them. This fantastical idea is so, or, like, the beginning of the movie is them walking down it's a hallway. Work. Yeah, it's what, you know, and so I, I loved how it was treated. And that, to me, made it funny as well. So it was enjoyable in a kind of comedic sense at times as well. But then it had its moments where it was really poignant and stuff, too. I just, yeah. So I absolutely loved it, and I, he just continues to be one of my favorite directors probably ever at this point because pretty much every film I've seen from him has just been. I want to see more of oh. his, yeah. And this is one. This is the earliest film of his that I've seen, and I wanted to mention. I think he did start out making actual documentaries, or mm. at least early in his career, he did some documentary stuff. So I can see how that worked into this uh, specifically when you said the interviews with the deceased people. Yeah, it would cut. So, like, the lighting in the background would change somewhat and the camera would move just a little bit as if it was filmed like a documentary. Yeah. So, and, I, and I think that's very intentional. Yeah. Like, it's meant to feel realistic in that sense. So, that yeah. was it. And he was the editor of the film, too. So, obviously, he was very involved in all that kind of stuff. So, uh, anything else you'd like to add before we do a spoiler section, then, if you'd like to discuss the end? I, I just want to see more of his movies. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm glad. Uh, without a doubt. Oh, okay, so we'll we'll jump into yeah, that was it. <laughs> yeah, so that's our thoughts on Afterlife without spoilers. So um, uh, we'll do some spoilers now. Okay, so my first spoiler is his memory. Uh, what's his name? The young man. The young guy. Yeah. Who worked at the? I can't remember his name for no. some reason. Uh, but <laughs> when we got to see it. And we saw him sitting on the bench, but we sat, he was sat alone. And then we see him looking up, and he's just looking at his crew. Mm. So for me, mm. that was his memory. He yeah. wanted to remember them and yeah. how it felt to have them looking at him. And it actually chokes me up. <laughs> it was really and sad. That's what I, that's, that's, Why does that happen? <laughs> because it's a great film, and I love that, because... That's another thing I was thinking. Like, do they it really got me? Can they can they still feel the way they used to when they were alive when they're in this place? Because clearly the young girl felt something for him. You mm. know, whether it was romantic of or not, she they did. she felt the a guy connection with his three year old kid. You know. Yeah, but even then, he says it so kind of matter of factly where he's accepted it and he, he doesn't seem too upset about it. Because he and gets to see her every year. No, I know, but like, it made me wonder throughout the entire film. Like, did do, do they really have the capacity anymore now that they're dead? Because they've been there for so many years, and that main character, the young guy, he's been dead for like what seventy years or something, or not seventy years, but like fifty years. I think he's been dead, and that gets revealed halfway through the yeah. film. So I think is, is he just numb to it? And then you see at the end that that was kind of his. Oh, it really got me. Gets me a bit too, actually. Yeah. <laughs> and it's I, and, getting me all over again. But I, I love that you don't. The shot was amazing, and the silence. Yeah, was yeah, and but. <laughs> but I was thinking, is that Stupid. is that part of the film that they made or not? You know, did they get to see that, or is that just the way he viewed it? And we're seeing his perspective because it is quite ambiguous for that. I don't know whether he said, "Okay, just just for the end of this little film, can we just film you just for you know?" I don't know if that's what you know was meant to yeah, happen but on that the, was, but it. It doesn't was really the matter. Message. The, the message, message, of course, was yeah. that his memory wasn't her after all; it was them, because he's been with them for fifty years. Yeah. Ugh. And then you look at them again in the cinema and. 
he's just gone and that's how you know like okay yeah so he just disappears yeah yeah so when we don't see all so when we don't see them watching their film and then disappearing we don't see that until he does it so you're right it does make it more impactful and it has that because i think if you did that and you just cut and they're all Mm. gone it's like okay that's how it happens that's a bit sad but this is like the one person and he's left behind other people yeah so it really (laughs) hones in on that kind of the letter was great um yeah i I like that it made sense to me then why he reacted the way it did yeah and so on and then it, i just i felt like they had good chemistry too so just yeah that letter was cool and it made me really want to study more japanese so i can write like that <laughs> yeah <laughs> Um, so so here we are talking about the film. You're like, yeah, it was okay. It wasn't amazing. You're like literally like crying almost on video thinking about it. Because the best part was that part. The the ending was best, and the interviews were best. Yeah. And then there were just parts of it that was kind of like, okay, let's go on to the next. Okay. You know. Uh, so it had its weak points, like I've already said, mm-hmm. but then it had some really impactful, and that was when it unraveled them in a way you know and him the the main character and so on it was really good yeah no i loved it um so that's it i think Uh, it's it's safe to say we've we very much enjoyed it i loved it Uh, it's i could see us becoming like a proper all-time favorite the more i watch it it's certainly one to go back to every couple of years and um yeah just it was just a perfect marriage of concept story characters acting and just never seen anything like it, which, you know, these days it's, it does get harder and harder, especially with the amount of movies I watch, um, to find things that you've never really seen before in terms of a story. And I do love films that deal with death or memory, and this just kind of wraps all up into one kind of really interesting mm. and cool story and poignant story and funny story. The old woman, I'm glad I didn't forget about that. You said she looked like a Ghibli S- Studio character. Ghibli character. Yeah. And I guess... She just sounded like one too. I'm trying Why to think. Why didn't we mention her? She was I know, so cute. yeah, she was so memorable yeah. without really saying anything. But didn't they say, oh, this is why she hasn't, she's not coming out with a memory because her memories don't go past her being nine years old? So is she one of those people No, who... she already picked her memory when she was dying. That's what they said. Oh, is that what they said? Yes, they, she already picked the memory from when she was nine years old before she actually passed on to them. <sighs> so she was already in that nine, mem- uh, nine year old memory stage. The way I perceived that was that she's she's one of those people who has the kind of the mental defect where they never progress past a certain age, you know. No, um, she, they said she already picked it. Okay. That was the word, wasn't it? I th- I think I don't know, like because because I I have known someone that made who's sense to me. I have no I've known someone who whose mental kind of you know, uh, y- age I guess kind of stopped at a point and they be- became an adult and it just stayed at that kind of young kind of uh point of view i suppose they even say i wonder what she she sees when she looks in the mirror right so she, i think that's what they meant i think they did mean no because everyone who chooses a memory they're going to go back into that state the guy who said that his memory was when he was six months old and the sun coming at mm-hmm. him he's going to go back to that state once he watches the movie hmm. i don't know how they filmed that one i'm glad we didn't see that to be fair <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. No, I, I, well, anyway, she was a memorable character regardless of you what the backstory back is supposed see, to be. But I'm yeah. pretty sure it said that she picked her memory before she hmm. crossed over. Before she died, she already picked her nine-year-old memory. Right, well, that's something to look out well, for next time. You know how like, time, your life flashes you by? That's probably what happened. I guess, but then... I she know. just went like, oh, this is this is nicer. Hmm. She was so old, she probably just fell asleep. You know, mm. and maybe her last memory was that, and then she just stuck by it. Yeah, I, I, I'm not sure. Anyway, so we'll leave it there. Uh, Afterlife, brilliant film. I look forward to seeing more of his films. And yeah, definitely. There's even a couple I want to watch again just to show you as well. So uh, anyway, that's it. Thanks for watching, and mm. uh, we'll see you in the next one. Did you have to do that right at the end? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> hey, he's all right by me. <laughs> Apart from the fact he throws cans of Carlin into a tree. <laughs> yeah, he's really cool. Yeah, he's really cool. <laughs> but he's not quite as cool as you. Cause... <laughs>